economists had a tough year in 2023 in terms of their forecasts. The expectation was we would experience a recession in 2023, primarily due to the restrictive monetary policy the Fed began to execute in 2022. In reality, we've had a very strong growth in real GDP um, as we went through the first three quarters of the year. That growth is slowing, will continue to slow, and we do expect a weaker real GDP number unfolding over the course of the next, uh, the fourth quarter of this year and into the first quarter of next year. Unemployment will rise, but not go above 5%, and the inflation rate will decline, probably down to the 3% level by the end of next year. So the environment is conducive for avoiding a recession, but also experiencing modest growth well below long-term trend line results. One of the wars that have to be dealt with next year is the effort that the Fed has on a monetary policy standpoint to combat what has been a very stimulative fiscal policy position since the pandemic. The government continues to drive significant increases in money, liquidity into the economy, offsetting the uh, desired impact by the Fed to slow down economic growth in order to reduce inflation. So the issue is going to be who wins that war between stimulative fiscal policy and restrictive monetary policy in 2024. Much will depend on the election. Given this conflict between fiscal and monetary policy, the outlook for 2024 uh, remains fairly optimistic. Uh, we do think that we avoid a recession. The economy grows at a less than 2% rate um, in the fourth quarter of this year and first quarter of 2024 before beginning to recover at a slightly faster pace, something just north of 2% in the last three quarters of the year. Inflation will continue to come down. Uh, inflation pressures will continue to recede, allowing the Fed to begin the process of uh, removing some of the restrictive monetary policy that's currently in place by the late third quarter into the fourth quarter of next year by reducing interest rates slowly but consistently um, in th and through 2025. In the short run, over the course of the next 15, 18 months, uh, I think we do see a slowing in consumer spending, uh, consumer final demand, a better balance between the supply and demand inequality that existed coming out of the pandemic, and that will reduce inflationary pressures going forward. The question about beyond 2024 will be really dependent upon decisions made about fiscal spending programs, taxes, and the Federal Reserve's decision about maintaining restrictive monetary policy. Those decisions are going to have to be watched carefully, as particularly we approach the elections next November. Northwest Ohio is going to, and is now in fact, uh, dominated by the distribution system opportunities. Our location gives us the opportunity to attract distribution companies, uh, firms like Amazon and others, that take advantage of the connectivity from interstate highways, rail, seaports, airports that will allow us to benefit uh, even as economic growth slows nationally, our economy continu can continue to grow. I see the housing sector continuing to be strong in terms of residential construction because we continue to be short housing in Northwest Ohio. The, the question is, can we fulfill the labor requirements that companies are looking for as they look for expansion opportunities. On balance, I, I think the outlook is fairly bright for Northwest Ohio, given the changes I see happening in the economy as a whole. The ag sector has, is having a very good year in 2023 with uh, fairly strong yields, good weather that produced a lot of those yields, and reasonably um, solid pricing. Um, I think that we'll continue to benefit from the um, climate change that's occurring, which uh, allows us to produce uh, while maybe restricting production of ag commodities 
in other parts of the world. So I think that the ag sector actually has a fairly bright future, uh, given the rapid uh, climate change affecting many other areas that doesn't seem to have affected us in Northwest Ohio nearly to the degree it has in the Midwest or the South. I think we avoid a recession largely because of the tightness in the labor market with the number of unfilled and open job positions still up around 10 million. Uh, we still have significant uh, demand for labor that will allow people to get jobs when they want them, keep the unemployment rate below what it might be otherwise, and allow personal income to grow, which will fuel continued growth in overall consumer final demand. That will allow the economy to uh, expand, not experience declines, and will keep us from a recession.